here, we look for the same documents, instead of encrypting them, we just steal them. It's nicer. And you don't give the user a notification, you just steal them. Um, so we got a list of the Excel spreadsheets, text documents, uh, pictures, PowerPoint presentations. And that's kind of cool. Um, but can we do something with it? Yes, we can. Let's now start uploading files from the computer into my machine over here that I control as an attacker. So let's take this file that I'm interested in. Um, operating systems not installed .csv. And I'm going to use a <clears throat> upload local file command. And that should tell uh, my PowerShell script to fetch that document and upload it to my machine over here, which it did. I can now open it, um, if you're really interested. I can open it, export it, and so on. Let's go back to that page again with a list of documents, see if there's anything else that might be valuable to us as an attacker if we want to go further into the environment. Network diagram, it's probably something that as an attacker, I'm pretty interested in scene. So let's upload the document as well. Just make sure to enable macros. Yeah, make sure to enable <laughs> macros. <laughs> cool. And this is the file. It's a network diagram, um, which again, as an attacker, may or may not be useful for us. There was another file that I saw and I'm kind of interested in that file. I don't know about you guys. It seemed kind of suspicious to me. It seems like a code name for some project. This guy, kangaroo.gif. Let's see what it says. I feel like it's a secret NSA project. <laughs> the guys in the other room. Uh, which, by the way, I don't know if you know, I just heard. So where's the B-Sides guy? You guys. So if you fill out all the, uh, you go to all the vendors, from what I understand, you, you, you get an iPad. Right? You get Okay, you get you get an iPad. So the people who spun the so I don't know if you know, but it's an NSA pre owned iPad. Um, so <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, <laughs> refurbished. It's an NSA refurbished iPad. So let's let's look at that um, secret document, kangaroo.gif. I've uploaded it. Let's see what this file is. It looks uh, extremely suspicious. It's probably some sort of a secret document. Let's see what it is. Ah, it's a GIF. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Playtime is over. We're going to get serious a little bit. And we're going to get serious by starting doing some interesting, more interesting stuff. So for example, let's, why not run a keylogger and logs everything that the user type on their machine? So let's do that. I'm going to invoke keylogger and I'm going to invoke that for, let's say, 30 seconds. Cool. And now whatever I, the, the user types over here would be, um, Registered. And what's your name? Dan. Dan. Dan was here. So that's a, you know, it's sort of like a nice and quick and easy way to capture everything that the user types. And we can do different things with it. Um, I'll get to that in a second. But it's kind of nice to log everything that the user types on their machine and then move it on to a completely different server. Um, for example, I can keylog passwords, right? Um, I can keylog secret information, whatever that information is. Um, let's, let's start by maybe see how we can get some passwords uh, in the environment, something that as an attacker I'm always interested in. Um, before I do that, um, let's see... Um, I'm just going to make sure that the user that I'm running in the context of is actually an admin on my machine. 
And yes, I am. Um, and that's great, as I said before, that we can now do many more things we were not able to do before. For example, um, I'm going to take, and it's an old trick, I'm sure you, you're familiar with it already, uh, I'm going to... I'm going to get a dump of the uh, local security subsystem service, uh, which is a process that essentially facilitates um, um, authentication in Windows. In some Windows versions, uh, that process also saves in clear text the username and passwords. So if you're in your corporate environment and someone lost their password and you want to recover that password, you can just go to a server or a machine that they logged into, you dump that process, you got to have admin privileges for that, and then you can use a program, Mimikatz is one program, there's different programs, that read that uh, the dump of that LSS process and can, and can then extract the clear text passwords out of it. So I have an admin access, I'm dumping LSS and I'm uploading it back to my machine. And now I take one, one now that I, I have an access to that file, I can move it on to a different utility and extract the clear text passwords out of it. Um, another nice thing that I can do is um, get a copy of the SAM. So SAM is the security account manager. It's a file, essentially a registry hive, but it's a file that sits um, right here. This file over here. And this file contains uh, the hashes of pretty much the local users and so on. Problem is that Windows locks that file. So if I try to copy it, and notice that I'm an admin on my machine right now, even if I try to copy it somewhere else, I get an... No, 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 don't copy. That's the best alert I've seen, seriously. All right. Uh, so, um, just a funny story. When I when I when I had my first internship ever, uh, I was doing some completely non-important work, and I was just killing time on the computer. And I remember the secretary; she told me, "Whatever it is that you do, don't go to random websites." And, uh, you know, I was still in school and I had no clue what, you know, where I should go and what I should do. So I said, okay, she, she says, don't go to any websites. They're probably watching everything that I do. Uh, so I'm not going to go anywhere. And, uh, you know, it got a little boring. And then after a, uh, after a while, you know, I opened the browser and then I went to ESPN.com because there was something I was following. And, <laughs> You know, type ESPN.com, I hit enter, and the second I hit enter, the fire alarm goes off. Uh, <laughs> kind of what happened here. And, 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 and I was freaking out. <laughs> and I immediately closed the browser. I wasn't even thinking that, that, you know, uh, what I did obviously had nothing to do with it. I just closed the browser and I was just standing there <laughs> waiting for the, the police to come and arrest me because I, I went to the wrong website. All right, so um, I'm going to continue. Uh, we're obviously not going to do everything, but let's finish up with some cool stuff. We left off where we uh, try to grab passwords. And if you remember, I tried to dump the uh, SIM, uh, which was the uh, security account manager. I tried to dump the LSAS, get clear passwords out of there. So we're doing all these tricks in order to get a user's password. And that's okay, but... Why go through all this trouble when I can just ask the user for their password? So let's do just that. Mm -hmm. 
so um, I'm just going to go here, and the second I hit enter, <laughs> and I'm asked for my password. If you're working in any type of environment, something like that pops up like 20 times a day, where you just the network connection happens or whatever, and it's just asking you for your password. So we're just initiating that uh, password window, and when I type my password, which would be, I don't know, what would be my password? Password. Password? Just password, right? Pass, password 2017, all right, it's an easy one. Um, and I get back the password immediately, and I can do different things with it. Um, as you notice over here, we have a uh, password vault as well, which we can do stuff with. And password vaults usually work by, sometimes, in the case of KeePass, work with the clipboard. So if I go to uh, KeePass, uh, and let's say, pretend that Notepad is a website that accepts username and passwords, I'm going to go into my KeePass, I'm going to copy the username, paste it into Notepad, and then I'm going to go to uh, KeePass again and copy the password, paste it, uh, or KeePass will do it automatically for me. In both ways, the KeePass uh, interacts with the browser or whatever form I have to fill using the uh, clipboard. So let's take advantage of that. Let's do, let's start monitoring the clipboard. And we can monitor the clipboard, in this case for let's say 30 seconds. And anything that I type into the keyboard, clipboard, uh, will come over here. So if I go back to my key pass, and again, I'm going to my website, and KeePass fills automatically the password for me. In this case, I'm just going to copy and paste it. I'm going to copy the username, paste it into the website, copy the password, paste it into the website again. And me as an attacker now have access to the username and password that a user just copied and pasted into the website. It's kind of cool, um, but, you know, there's a problem with that. And the problem is that I can't really wait for the user to keep copying and pasting all the passwords, right? It's not very efficient as an attacker. So let's do something else. Um, let's steal the key pass file and get all the passwords at the same time. So for that, I'm going to go back into my uh, bot and I'm going to find password vaults. And similar to the other command that looked for documents, this function looks for all the files that have a password vault extension. And it will also go into the registry and look at the places where password vaults are registered. In this case, we have this password kdbx uh, file. And remember how we stole some documents before that? I'm going to do the same thing again over here with my uh, upload local file and uh, I now have the password vault in my hand where that contains all the passwords but what, what, what's the problem with it I'm missing one thing I have the password vault what am I missing what's that password the password to the correct so I'm missing the password to the vault and I really need it, otherwise the password vault file would be sort of useless for me. That's, that's the point of a vault. So why don't we again just ask the user for the password? And I'm going to do it like that. I'm going to combine a few functions that I showed before. I'm going to kill the process, kill the key pass process. I'm going to display a crash window, uh, a crash message, a crash notification on the screen. Reactivate key pass and then use the keylogger to wait for the user to type the password. I combine all these functions into one function, which I just called display um, crash window. And I'm going to put the name of the uh, 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 process I want to crash. And when I do that, K 
کی پس؟ میبی کی پس دار ای اکس ای او کرش ویندوز ای میده تایپ آفه هیر بیکیشن ستاپ ورکنگ این از دی یوزر یو نو اگین هفنز آل دی تایم ام جس کنو کلیک آن انتر پاپس آپ اگین From the attacker side, I'm going to use my keylogger and when the user types their password, I now have it over here from the attacker side, which I can then open uh, the vault with. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, And not, I have, I, okay, I have a bunch of things. I hate it when in presentations, um, you go in the, and the guy says, oh, I have all this amazing stuff, but I, but I can't show you that because I never believe them. Uh, but I swear to God, I really did have a bunch of stuff, uh, to show you, but that's okay. Uh, so I'm going to skip a few and I'm going to go towards the end. Remember how we controlled, uh, the keyboard? I'm now going to see if I can control the mouse. And for that, I just created a function, which I just called control mouse. And when I run it, no hands, my mouse is moving. Um, again, just for demonstration purposes, I move the mouse kind of randomly. I'm going to click the mouse as well. Yep. And move it again. Um, you can imagine the potential that this kind of uh, control has. We control the keyboard, now we control the mouse. We have a control over pretty much everything, um, except for maybe the screen. So why don't we do that? Let's get a control over the screen as well, using get screenshots. And for that, what I really do, I want to see everything that the user sees on their computer. So I'm going to say, for the next, I don't know, 30 seconds or so, just show me everything that the user does on their computer as well. Oops, screenshots. And now everything that the user does, um, I can essentially see on from the attacker or from the attacker side. And I'm doing it by taking screenshots one after another and going back to the diagram we saw before that, um, where I can where where those, those screenshots are being sent to my command and control center every second or so, which gives the attacker um, an idea of what the user does real time. Cool. So I have, I have the signs over there saying me that, that I need to sort of, uh, finish the presentation at this point. Um, so, uh, this is sort of like an abrupt, uh, uh, ending to my, to my presentation. Um, but I guess that's pretty much it. Thank you. Uh, before we finish and I take questions, I know I have just a few, uh, uh, questions to take. Um, This thing, just a plug, uh, I'm working now with a, a major training provider, let's just keep it at that, uh, for three-day training that sort of goes over that, that uses that CNC uh, to learn PowerShell. Um, I think it's going to be cool, um, but that's going to come up pretty soon. Follow me on Twitter uh, or get my contact information later if that's something you're interested in doing. Uh, and I think that's... <laughs> That's pretty much it. Thank you. We have time for one or two questions. All right, just uh, just one or two questions. If anyone has anything, anybody have a question? What's the best defense? So yeah, so the what, what the question the question was what was what's the best defense? So I'm a big fan of whitelisting, which means that everything that is not whitelisted and permitted to run uh, just cannot run. Problem is that PowerShell is a whitelisted process because it's signed by Microsoft. Um, in order to defend against that specific type of attack, uh, I will try to monitor against macros that run and spin another process. Um, that's something that whitelisting uh, uh, tools do let you do. Um, yep, yeah, that's for that specific attack that will do that. Also, watch for any uh, additional PowerShell processes. 
any PowerShell process that runs in a hidden window, which is what we have over here, um, would be probably an indicator that something bad is happening. So when I go here to my, I'm just going to run another uh, another PowerShell. So we should have uh, only one PowerShell process running, right? But there's two. One PowerShell process is the one I just ran, but we see that there's another one. And the other PowerShell process started at, let's see what time. Um, yeah, started just um, a couple of minutes ago, 2.56. So that's a, that's a start time of the other process. So we see we have two PowerShell processes running. One of them started uh, 20 minutes ago. Obviously, a call that so, so, something 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 is happening. All right, that's it. All right, all right, everybody. Uh, please give a warm round of applause for you. All right.